Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh guys Make sure that you try these supplements out They're very very good, very healthy, natural And um, you can check the link in the description box That is Nature's Blend Black Seed Oil And they have other things as well Oh <laughs> Put your hand away little boy 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 <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing good uh, We've got a special show today here in the green room And I'm joined by the doctor, Dr. Imran Rafiq, how are you? Alhamdulillah good, No shaking hands today <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to be talking about why that is the case um, But before we do inshallah, I wanted to Since we're coming out obviously from Islamic paradigm if you, if you like there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he says, "Ida dakhaltum bi ardin, or ida sami'atum bi ta'uni bi ardin, fala tadkhuluha." If you hear of a plague in a country, so don't enter that country. Wa ida waqa bi ard, wa ida waqa bi ardin, wa antum biha, fala takhruju minha. And if it happens in a country whilst you're in it, so don't leave from that particular country uh, or particular land, because ard could mean uh, land. Meaning here. The prophetic advice for dealing with things which are infectious, things which are transmittable, things which can spread, is isolation. Um, so that's that's the Islamic advice. Um, looking at the coronavirus as the example here, a quick question. First of all, what is the coronavirus? And a subsidiary question here is, to what extent now should we be thinking about isolation as a, a solution? Bismillah ar rahim um, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa um, Two very important questions, and I'm glad you started with the hadith, because yeah. really as Muslims we need to be thinking bigger than this crisis and thinking about our lives in a, in a bigger picture. Yes. Um, so the so some very basic questions. So what is the what is the coronavirus? So coronaviruses are a family of viruses um, that have been around that known been known for many years. Yes. They include things like um, SARS and MERS, which were, which mm. happened sort of two thousand three, two thousand twelve to seventeen, mm. um, which are sort of the more serious ones that we've heard about. But even the common cold falls into this as well. Really, absolutely. So. And and they're named after the shape, so they're shaped like a crown, hence the corona. Uh, like name. a like a crown. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So we've what what's happened now is that there's been a uh, a mutation in a virus that's now transmissible amongst human beings. Mm. So this is started in Wuhan, uh, Hubei province in China, um, and what what really happened? We don't know the cause of this, but really from from an animal virus, this has transmitted mutated slightly and now become something that human beings can pass on to each other. And this virus is um, something that can spread quite readily. And that's the main danger from this. It spreads quite readily. And also it affects people, uh, particularly respiratory, uh, quite significantly. And so isolation is a very important step now. I mean, the government's announced this and we can talk about the government advice in a moment. But really, there's a couple of things that happen. So because this virus is a uh, is tiny, uh, as as you would expect. So a, a human here is about seventy five micrometers in size or microns in size. This virus is zero point one microns, so a thousandth, you know, many fold, a thousand, at least a thousand times less, many more fold. So something that's very tiny and itself is the way it's propagated is it, it, it enters your body. And this is important to understand how is it doing this. So how is it, this, the, you're covering here how it's actually transmitted. A lot Absolutely. of people do think it's airborne. Is it airborne? So it's not airborne in the sense that the virus itself is traveling in the air. Right. Okay. Um, the, the, what happens is that when we cough or sneeze, mm -hmm. um, we can generate a uh, some, some vapor from our mouths mm -hmm. that can contain droplets of saliva that in the saliva that can we can have um, the virus present. This will then do a couple of things. So one of the advices is, is to stay a meter, two meters apart, two meters apart, which is what we're trying to emulate here. And that's because that's probably the, the distance that if someone were to generate something, it would sort of fall down and settle before. So that's one thing. Yes. The second thing is once this these particles, so if you inhale those particles or you breathe them in, or uh, this is how they would attach to your the membranes inside your mouth or inside your nose and then find an entry into the body. The other mechanism that they enter is they fall onto surfaces, uh, hard surfaces, soft surfaces, and they tend to, and the virus tends to last and varying times depending on the surface that it lasts, lands on. Um, so the 
depending on the surface, the time can vary. So people have given different times that you can you know, expect this virus to last. So anything between a few hours to a couple of days or longer. What then happens is we're going about our day-to-day -day business, we're touching hard surfaces, and then the virus is on our hands. So it lasts for what, a maximum of five days? or So no one, that the data isn't clear. Yeah. So the, the thing to do is to uh, assume that it's a long time, right. so two to three days at least on any surface, although it could be, some people saying less than 24 hours. Three three to six hours is on a, on a soft surface as well, because the soft surface is much more absorbent, so they tend to absorb things and you're less likely to get it by touching. Um, now, once you come into contact with that hard surface, you then have virus particles potentially on your hands. And this is where the hand washing is really important. Because if you're touching things and then inadvertently our habits are to scratch our nose, you know, face, eyes, it will find its way, the virus will find its way into our system through the mouth, through the eyes, through the nose because of handling. So a couple of things to do, keep the hands below the shoulders if you can. So try not to reach up to your face. And also wash the hands often, and we're being told this sort of. And and to do that with soap. Absolutely, and the, and the reason you're absolutely right. So the washing the hands with the soap is important, because what the soap does is acts as a detergent, and the virus itself is surrounded by a lipid layer, so a layer of fat, or oil, if you like. And what that does is it allows it contains on there molecules that the body the virus can attach to molecules in the body and to enter the body. So if you use a detergent. What you're doing is you're removing this lipid layer so the virus essentially becomes inactivated because of that process and it can't have that effect so the so the washing techniques are quite well described uh, we can talk about that a little bit later if you like but the, the key thing is to to make sure you have a good lather you lather your hands well and you wash for a certain length of time 20 seconds is being described as minimum yeah. but the longer the better really so so do face masks and stuff like that does that help so that's a great question. Um, so, and a lot lots of people have been buying face masks. So face masks are helpful depending on who uses them. Um, so the, the, like I said, the, micro, the, the virus itself is tiny. And unless, unless you have a mask that is able to uh, inhibit that tiny particle from entering, the mask is not going to do very much. So what's the point of masks? So if you're, if you're a medical professional, and you're in touch with uh, patients all the time who may be coughing, who may have active symptoms, you're, you're going to be at risk of having these particles that might be floating in the air from the coughing and the sneezing. And so you'd have a face visor with a mask that you'd use to prevent spread to yourself. And is that effective? That would be effective because you're minimising the contact. Um, you'd also have a gown, you'd have gloves, you'd be fully clothed with that, and you would change that um, whenever you come out of that environment, before you come out of that environment. So that's one set of masks that the health professionals would use. There are other masks which are like surgical masks. These don't have that uh, fine um, uh, filtering capacity, but what they do is they they will uh, prevent water droplets from entering that people can wear. If and these were the people would be people who are seeing someone who would be suspected of having the condition. So maybe GPs on the front line, etc., who would who would have this interaction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the average person on the street should they be wearing a mask? Mm. So what what you have to think about how how this is transmitted and what the mask is forming. If you wear a mask, the only the only time it would be useful to wear it is if you're coughing yourself, and you don't want to transmit this, the, these these uh, sputum particles mm. or these the vapor particles from the coughing mm. to other people. So it's protecting other people from getting your virus that you already have because you're coughing. So them. let's let people continue doing it then. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. The the wearing it yourself if you're asymptomatic. Um, probably you're going to increase the likelihood of touching your face. Yes. Because people adjust masks without realizing. Mm. Um, they don't obviously once the virus once the mask becomes a bit saturated with fluid, it becomes in ineffective. Mm. And so people tend to also when they're eating, they tend to remove and eat. And mm. you're essentially contaminating yourself more. It doesn't really serve a purpose. So it's counterintuitive. But wearing a mask if you're asymptomatic probably is not going to do too much for you. I want to ask a question about now closing down masajid or mosques or any other religious place for mm. that matter I mean that was Boris Johnson has come out and said that we should close pubs and you know leisure places and whatever uh, he hasn't I don't think he's imposed any law just yet which might be part of the problem uh, which we might actually discuss later on but um, in terms of closing religious places what's your advice on that? So I think this is pretty clear uh, yes. and the re the Which any, is in, any in, plane, in, absolutely. you should close it down. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So any way that there's a gathering of people, mm. there is an increased likelihood of spread. Mm. 
Yes. So we have a measure of spread in viruses. Now it's called the RO value. Um, it's called? The RO value. Yes. Or R0 value, R0 value, people. Right. right. This is really the, the d- number of people who will get the virus from an individual affected. Um, so this vi- virus has an RO value that sits between 2.5 and 3.5. So it's probably around about three. So that means three people can get this virus from any one individual. So if you imagine there's one person with the virus, he'll give it to three, he'll then wow. give it to nine, he'll then give it to 27. You know how it has to increase. Yes. Now.